For the amount of time I've been playing guitar and for the number of guitars that I play, you'd think I'd have the slightest clue how to do any kind of repair work or any setup on any one of these things, but I don't. And so a couple years ago when I was with Answer Infinity recording in the studio with a really good producer who gave us a lot of great tips, uh, one of the people he put us in touch with was Mobile Guitars out of Brooklyn, New York. And these are two guys that do amazing work. Uh, a lot of times one of them's out on tour with different bands you've heard of before, and they'll also come out to your place and work on the guitars. So they've kind of become friends of mine. And this isn't like a sponsored video or anything, but last time they were here, I just wanted to grab the GoPro, go up into the studio where they were doing the work on the guitars, and just ask them a couple questions so they can give some tips and talk about how it is that they go about doing setups and cleaning them up and doing what they do. So here's that footage. Hope you guys enjoy. So I got my buddies here from Mobile Guitars. I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, they come in a couple times a year and work on the guitars for me because I am way too stupid to do it myself. So they do the setups and string changes and I'm gonna let them say hi, turn it around. Hey everyone, I'm Dan, Mobile Guitars. What's up, John Oliva, Mobile Guitars, how you doing? So uh, why don't you tell me what you're doing like when you do a basic setup, I'll move in on the keys little here. What are you looking for and that kind of thing? Uh, for basic setups, obviously cleaning the guitar, polishing the frets, oiling the board, depending on the type of board it is, uh, strings intonation, tightening all the loose ends, we'll spray and clean electronics if anything's scratchy, check for high frets and, uh, you know, knock some back down if needed or level some if, any, if anything needed, check the nut slots for sticking. Check the bridge saddles for anything kind of sticky and pokey that might break strings. Tighten up the hardware, and that's about it. Polish it up. Straighten the neck if need be. But you know, yeah, all the normal, all the normal stuff. So every time I get a brand new guitar, I have these guys come over and set it up for me. It ends up playing way better than it even it did off the shelf, and it's pretty crucial to getting a setup the way that I'm comfortable with. So we're gonna talk about that. All right, so people think I got a brand new guitar. Why do I need these guys? Why do I need a setup? Um, depending where it's coming from, who it's made by, it needs a lot of attention because there's some things when it leaves the factory that they're not really looking for or they just, they're cranking them out in such mass quantities. Um, there's some attention to details we gotta, we gotta look at. So on Mark's, you got a brand new 35th anniversary PRS here. Um, and we're gonna look at the nut slots. So sometimes these aren't cut properly. We're gonna go through all of these. And on the bridge, sometimes the saddles also will need some smoothing out of the factory. Um, those are the two main things that I look for in this. And then just basically going over the instrument in its entirety because it's a new guitar and no one's ever done this before. So I cut the strings already, but the first step was play it, get familiar with the instrument, see if anything jumps out. A lot of times the frets on the side, this guy's pretty good, but a lot of times these will be poking out from the side. Little things like, like this. So that's why you should always get your new guitars looked at. Yeah, man, and you guys have heard me talk about fret dressing about 400 times in every one of my guitar reviews and how it has to get done. Well, these are the guys that fix it for me every time they're jabbing me in the hand. Yeah, something that's, that's often overlooked when someone buys a guitar because they just don't know any better or don't think about it at the time. Uh, you know, you're overwhelmed with the excitement of the way the guitar looks and the color and the sound. And maybe you don't notice at first one of the minor details like the frets are poking out on the sides. And what happens is when a guitar hangs in a guitar store and it dries out a little bit and some moisture content leaves the neck, it's going to shrink and those fret ends are going to pop out and just be a little sort of annoying or could actually be painful or cut your fingers depending on how bad it is. So that's one of the main things that we end up doing on new guitars and it's something we do in the winter a lot uh, up up in New York and in the tri-state area because uh, the weather could be kind of erratic it'll go from 100 percent humidity outside and then a week or two later it could be you know eight percent humidity and when those necks shrink a little bit that's when you gotta dress the sides of the frets and then you know usually after a guitar has one or two fret dresses in its lifetime if they're done right usually they don't need them again but it's you know as this wood dries out over time, you could you could you couldn't you could need a fret dress. It's possible a couple times on a guitar in its lifetime. In case you want to know the right way to put strings on, 
this is way better. Well, no vintage pegs with, with a 7.2 volt drill, but go for some nice new uh, pegs or, or I think so is lithium, just like the pickups on this. There you go. For those of you who know what that is. Gentlemen and ladies, don't become nervous when he does this. This man is trained. He knows what he's doing. He will not break it. He will only make it better. <laughs> so in case you don't know, these guys go out on tour with some bands you've probably heard of and do the guitar teching on the road. We were just talking about that. Sorry I didn't film that for you. Can't give you everything, but I'm going to have you tell you a little bit about, or have them tell you a little bit about who they've worked with. Yeah, we've been on the road with a bunch of different artists and bands and guitar players and assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all kinds of characters. Yeah, all kinds, all kinds. Uh, my current artist that I've been with for uh, the last five years is a band called Collective Soul. I do some work for Steve Miller also. Dan Tex for a band called Bayside. And uh, through our business, we've done Johnny Swim and uh, Corey Taylor and a couple of other people when they do solo stuff, and things, things in the Northeast. But uh, I mean, yeah, we've been on the road with a lot of different artists. Uh, Switchfoot, The Cult, uh, done a gig with Cindy Lauper, um, the Alkaline Trio, this guy. Um, yeah. You lose track after a while. Yeah, yeah you lose. You, yeah, you lose track a little bit. Full, who, full gamut of different bands and. Different of all the bands, bands you've been out with, who had the most guitars that you had to work on on the road? The most guitars that I had to work on on the road. Um, Did anybody just travel with a ridiculous number of guitars? Well, at the time. Switchfoot probably had a lot of stuff because it, there was really three guitar players because uh, the keyboard player Romy would also play guitar. So we'd have like two or three guitars for Romy, about five for the lead guitar player and for the lead singer, we'd have two acoustics, maybe three acoustics and two or three electrics. So that was a lot. And then plus obviously the bass player's got a couple basses. Um, so that might've been the most, but um, yeah. I, all the stuff I've done with Steve Miller has been kind of like solo stuff, so it's never been an outrageous amount of guitars at the time. So I know that was just a mishmash of questions and just kind of conversations and such, but uh, it wasn't supposed to be an organized interview. Just a little insight into what they do and maybe it gives you some tips. If you have any questions, guys, or comments, or want any more info about these guys, let me know in the comments. I get back to everybody as soon as I can, and I hope you keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.